Hey guys, welcome to the second half of part eight of my Bullet 500 restoration. So as you can see, the uh, left side, the whole primary case is wrapped up, uh, clutch, alternator, primary chain, everything's good, everything's finished. Uh, I did hit an obstacle. The main one was the engine sprocket that goes onto the crankshaft. And I'll explain more in the video, but uh, there was a sizing problem and no one really knew what was going on. And then I uh, finally figured it out, but it did cost me a little bit over a week. And that's why this video is later than expected again. So I apologize, but everything worked out. It's all wrapped up. So uh, I'm obviously I'm, I'm filming this after the fact, but let's go back upstairs, go back in time and uh, get this left side wrapped up. Okay, the inner case is all cleaned up, and that's where the sprag clutch went. So now I'm going to put some sealant around there, put the gasket on, and then I'm going to put the cover back on with a plug to cover up where the starter was. All right, this is a perfect fit. Everything's on there, a perfect seal. So let's take this downstairs and get it back on the bike. So the primary case, the back of it's ready to go on. And there's just one seal, it's right here. So I'm gonna put some sealant and then the gasket on here and then a little sealant on the bike side. And that's it, there's no seal here. There's actually a seal that goes on the other side. And uh, these, these holes are threaded and it just screws on there. But that's where the uh, front sprocket goes. So there's actually no seal there. So it's just that one, and we're ready to go. And one more thing, there's a little oil seal right here. That's where the uh, transmission shifter shaft comes out. And there's not a lot of stress on it. You know, nothing's really spinning. It's just, you know, little notches when you shift gears. But uh, you can only access this thing from the back of the case. So you might as well replace it because this is your only real shot to do it. Okay, so the back cover is on, and uh, so far so good, but there's some issues that are, aren't deal breakers, but they're not exactly ideal, but uh, everything should be okay. So there are, you have to screw down these three screws, one, two, and three, but that one on the bottom right, the head is all but stripped. Uh, I remember it was a problem when I took it out, and it was a problem putting it back in. Now I got it in, I got a, uh, a, a, a tool in there that was able to tighten it down, and it's tight. All three of these are tight, but uh, the head on that is, uh, 
is fairly well gone, which is kind of a bummer, but I guess it doesn't matter because hopefully I'll never have to take this off again. So again, these three are secure, so I'm not real worried about it. But that's number one. Number two is on this side. So you can see the left and the bottom screw are OEM screws, and then the top and the right one are just something from a hardware store. And uh, this is how I found it when I opened it up. The problem is, is these two thread okay on there, but they won't thread there. And those two thread in that order at the top. But it looks like, I don't know if they re-tap the holes for these top two. I'm not sure. But nothing, nothing fits anywhere except where they are. And they fit. And it works. And I'm sure it's going to hold the oil seal. It held the, the old oil seal. So that's what we have over here. Again, it's not exactly ideal, but it should work. Okay, this is the uh, inner oil seal that goes behind the clutch. And this side goes up against the middle of the primary case. So I'm just going to put a little bit of a black sealant on this side. And I'm going to remove the screws I showed you that are kind of all different, two from a hardware store. I'll remove them in the right order, and then I'll put this on. And this is the sealant I'm using. It's just uh, ultra black gasket maker, uh, very common. And you could actually use this in lieu of gaskets if you want, but it's, uh, it's kind of a mess when you take it out. But uh, that's what's going on there. And you want to get it on while it's still wet. So it's, it's going to, it's a little bit of a tight fit, but it'll slide on. There it goes. And of course, line the screw holes and just push it in place. You don't want to torque it down yet. You just want to kind of get it hand tight and wait about an hour for this to set a little bit. Then you torque it down. You don't torque it down when it's wet. So I'm now going to put these screws back in in the proper order. I'm not torquing this down, just tight enough but the threads are a little screwy, so I can't do it with my fingers. Okay, I'll come back and torque this down in about an hour, but uh, it's on there, and uh, everything is threading reasonably well, so I'm not worried about this either. And if you're wondering, the answer is yes. I did order those screws as well, Right part number, everything is right, but these won't thread in either. They're just a hair too wide. So, so my advice is if you're doing this to your own bike, keep every screw you take out, even if they're not in the best of shape, because you just never know. All right, so we're ready to get everything put back in here. A couple things to note. If you notice when I put this on, there was a green gasket on there. That was actually designed to go behind it, but because these screws are a little funky, I went with the uh, black gasket sealer instead, just to be safe. But I figured while I had it, I'd see, well, I just put it on the front, see what happens. But when I tightened the screws, then it just twisted and tore it. So I took it off. So it's only, it's only for the back. So if you have one and don't use it for the back, don't try to use it for the front. It's not going to work. Anyway, the reason this video has been delayed is because the drive gear that goes on the crankshaft didn't fit. And I wasn't sure what was going on. I thought I might even have to file mine down to, to make it work. It was very frustrating. But uh, I figured it out. It's very strange. And uh, this is what happened. Okay, so that's the original. And then this is a new one. So this is what happened. In 2004, Royal Enfield uh, changed their tooling on a couple of things. And it included the... 
the ones to machine the splines, the pattern right there on the back of the crankshaft. And by doing that, uh, this one, it, it's, it's kind of weird. So mine is a 2006 and this fits the post 2004 crankshaft, which was what was in the bike. But my new crankshaft did not follow that retooling. It's still from before 2004, the pattern on there. And the reason is because they only change it on the electric start bikes, not on the kickstart only bikes. I mean, it's crazy. So this is a little bit universal because of that. So what I ended up having to do is get a drive gear that's uh, with the pattern with the splines that are pre-2004, and uh, but it's still completely the spec. The only difference is is the pattern right here fits my crankshaft. So it took me several days to figure out what was going on, but I got it, and I have the new drive gear now, so we're ready to go. So here's my new clutch. There's the rear hub and the clutch basket at the back of it. And there are the teeth, and I need to get the uh, primary chain, and I'm going to hook it around that and the gear, and then they have to go in together. They have to sort of, if you remember when I took it out, they just slide right in together, and then I'll assemble the rest of the clutch. These are the clutch plates. They're all in order, but I don't want to put them in dry. What you want to do is get some oil on them. So I've got my oil in a little tub here. I'm just going to soak each one, each of the friction plates, just for a few seconds before putting them into the basket. Just, you don't want to put them in dry, just it can have some extra wear doing that, and it's just uh, things, I always feel like things can stick a little bit. It's a wet clutch, so you want to put them in wet. All right, I'm going to put the rear hub of the clutch on first. It's just going to make it easier, and then the clutch basket just kind of slips over it, because it's just a little bit more technical. It's got to go through the little splines of the transmission, so. That way, now I just have to get the clutch basket over this as opposed to trying to maneuver that into place because I've already got to make sure I get the drive gear onto here. So it just makes it easier. And it's in. And uh, this one was a little fiddly, but it went on. You know, it slid right on. It's just a matter of getting it perfectly lined up. And then it was just easier just uh, putting the hub on first so I didn't have to also try to match that one up with the teeth of the shaft coming out of the transmission. But uh, it's in there. Now let's start assembling the clutch. But before I do anything, I'm going to put the nut back on here to secure this uh, clutch basket down. And then I'll start putting the plates on. So you first put on a washer. And then the nut. And this is a nylon nut, so you're going to have to... I'm going to have to use my clutch holding tool to keep this from spinning when I tighten this down. The tool just slips right over the back of the hub, these three posts. And then it's going to just brace up against the bracket that holds on the foot peg so I can tighten this down. When the bike was still running, I was using a 20W50 conventional oil, but now that this is basically a brand new engine, I'm going to go with a 15W50 synthetic blend. I think that's definitely the way to go. 
I just I picked this up from a local Harley dealership. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour a little bit, bit of this into this bin and then just start soaking the friction plates as I put them in the clutch basket just uh, so they're not dry. You don't want to, again, you don't want to put these in dry. You want to just kind of, you don't have to soak them for two hours as some people say. Just, uh, just get a coat of oil on there and then get them in there and uh, you'll be fine. So each clutch is going to be different, but uh, it's pretty simple. The plates just slide on. You've got steel plates and friction plates. And they're either going to go into these grooves in the center or these outer grooves. And you just slip them in, or, uh, slip them in order, and uh, it's actually really simple. And then the center push rod goes on. Don't forget to put this on or the clutch won't engage. And then the final cover plate goes on. And then the last cover goes on. And the way this works, there's uh, six springs. So you have three that go on these posts and then three that go on the posts on the on the final cover and then these these three screws just go into these extended posts And because there are springs here, you just have to push a little bit to get the screws started. And then just tighten everything down evenly. So just keep going back and forth. Okay, once it's tight, this is going to want to now turn, so I can't really bolt them down, and I can't use my little tool again with everything on here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a, a little piece of wood wrapped in a, in a cloth just right here to just kind of hold everything on. It's actually the back of a mallet, and just slip it in here, and that should hold it. And real quick, I forgot to film this, but uh, behind this gear is a little spacer. It's this one. That's the old one. I have a new one in there now. And what it does is it goes uh, inside the oil seal and up against the last bearing. And then the bottom of this gear pushes up against that. And the purpose of that is so this gear doesn't just slide all the way back against the case. And then when you screw down the rotor, everything will just be locked in place. So you need to put this spacer in there. So that'll keep this uh, up above the back of the case so everything will spin freely. Okay, the next thing is just to put this little spacer right up against the gear and that spaces the rotor for the alternator and the gear. And then right here is a little, that little key goes back in. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna go into a little notch in the rotor and hold it in place. And it just slots right in. And then here's the rotor. It's basically just a big round magnet. And you can see the groove right there is going to slot into this key. And then just the final bolt goes on, but don't forget the lock washer.
Okay, this is going to want to spin now when I tighten this down. So just get uh, the piece of wood. I'm going to use that wooden mallet again with a cloth around it and just put it right up here to keep this from spinning. Then you can just tighten this down. Next thing is the stator that just slips over this, but you're going to need some kind of a spacer, a way to equally space the center of this around the rotor. So I have this from Hitchcock's, and what you do is you literally just wrap it around it, and that'll provide the perfect space between the two. So it's going to be a little finicky, but it's, it should be very doable. Now, another thing, another wrench here is... I only have two studs because if you remember the one up here was stripped, I had, to, I had to remove it. And the one that I was sent has the wrong threads, it won't go in. They sent me two different ones, none of them work. It's an M7 metric thread, apparently they're sending me imperial threads, I don't know what's going on. but uh, So I've got an M7 bolt here that's going to work, but it's just it's going to be a little finicky. So let's just see how this goes. All right, so again, this is going to wrap around, and this is going to provide the space that I need. But let's see how easy or hard this is. And then this is going to always remember the wire faces out the back. All right, so far so good. You gotta get it about okay. So I got it on the first two studs, and I got my spacer in here spacing. So now we've got to get this bolt through, and there are spacers on the first two studs, so I have to get the spacer on this side of the bolt, so I'm going to put this in and then put the spacer on this side and then start threading this in. Alright, that's on there enough. Now I'm just going to push this forward and then this should keep everything spaced properly and then we'll tighten it down. So just to show you, the spacer's on there, and you can't really see it in the back, but uh, it's even. So this thing should be positioned correctly when I tighten it down. Okay, new problem. So <laughs> everything's going okay so far, but it turns out that this bolt is too long because uh, it can only go so far into the case. Uh, before it bottoms out because you can see these stick out and then you put nuts on them so they stick out a little bit where so this is going to stick out too it won't go in all the way so i'm going to take this upstairs real quick and cut it down to size and then i'll break it back then it should work but uh small obstacle not a big deal i'll be right back i'll be back okay the screw is cut and back on everything fits put a lot of loctite on it it's not going anywhere and uh, these are almost tight the problem is is that the the bolt is sticking out so much the ratchet won't fit in there anymore so I'm just going to use uh, just a little wrench to really tighten these down and then uh, I'll take out my little spacer and check it and hopefully all is well Okay, the spacer is out. Everything looks great. Everything feels good. I'll show you how I check it. The problem with this particular stator is it's got kind of this uh, shielding on the outside, but the shielding itself isn't completely even. So it actually it looks like it's narrow at the bottom than at the top, but that that's not indicative of uh, the actual uh, placement of the stator in the rotor because of that. So it's uh, you it you can't visually really check it because of that. But I'll show you how I, uh, how I confirm everything's uh, spaced properly. I also uh, put the wire through, so I'll plug that into the wiring harness next. And uh, 
All I got to do is put in the chain tensioner there at the bottom and I'll be ready to close this up finally. Okay, the spacer was in there even. Everything uh, came out right. So I'm not real worried about this uh, not being spaced right. But because I can't really visually confirm it, the way you do it is you just, uh, just turn it and feel for any, uh, any inconsistencies. You can tell, I mean, I can tell, you know, just by doing this a little bit that it's not rubbing at all. You know, you'd feel it if it wasn't if it wasn't space right. You'd feel the uh, stator and the rotor making contact, but there's absolutely no contact here. Yeah, everything is very smooth. Okay, learn from my mistakes and save yourselves. You had one job to do. So I had to take the stator off. I just stuck it right there, but the wire is still going through. And uh, it's actually not even a bad thing because I meant to put some uh, more Loctite on these screws and I didn't. And uh, so now I can do it. So if nothing else, that's a good idea. Like you can see the post actually came out when I had screwed this. So I'm going to Loctite that down and uh, it'll be more secure. So the reason I had to do this though is because to put the chain tensioner in, it's got to go on that stud right there and the stator's in the way when you put it on because I was just going to do that last so you've got to put the chain tensioner on before you put the stator on so lesson learned but it's going to be a good thing because I'll have all these uh all these will have Loctite on them now so I'm not terribly upset about it so I'm going to put the chain tensioner on now And it's one washer. And for some weird reason, it's two screws. Okay, it's on there. Both nuts are on. And uh, the only thing I could think of is that second nut just kind of acts as a lock nut. Because, uh, but it's, I guess, just to be safe, because you can tighten the first one down as tight as you want, and uh, the adjuster is still free to move. So it must just, it must just be a little bit of a, a safety thing to have that secondary lock nut on there. Okay, the stator is back in. Everything's checked. Everything's good. So this, uh, the primary case is now finished. I just have to plug in the alternator wires and I'll be able to put the cover back on. And you're gonna love what they did to the cover, but it should be okay. Uh, I'll show you that in a minute. But I do have a little cheat sheet here to tell me which wires go where because the colors are different than the one I took out, but it's very easy. All right, we hit another snag, surprise. I do like surprises. And uh, this one's not a big deal. If, uh, if you can see the ends of the stator right there they don't fit inside these little tubes that are coming off the wiring harness so i'm just gonna have to do a little cutting and splicing and heat shrink tubing but uh, not a big deal and i'm not even worried about these being easily plugged in and out because uh, this uh, alternator i plan for it to last for decades and hopefully just the life of the bike but the good news is is that this is finished and finally ready to close up and just going back to the chain tension, uh, it's pretty good. Again, I don't get, I don't want this to be too tight, but it's definitely not too loose. And uh, this is going to be pretty good for a while. So I think tension-wise, we're we're good to go with this. So I just need to put this rubber O-ring just around the groove here on the back of the primary case, and then I can put on the cover. But uh, let's look at this cover for a minute. So. I don't know if it was leaking a little bit or something, but someone before me had the grand idea to grind this down, I guess thinking they're gonna make it flat and make it better, I don't know, but they left a very rough surface in its wake and it's just uh, kind of ridiculous. I don't even know how much, uh, you know how much surface I lost with them grinding this down, but uh, it still clears everything and it'll work. Uh, what I'm going to do is just put a light coat of the black gasket uh, adhesive just around this, 
and I'm going to let it set for about an hour just so I've got a, you know, so it fills in these voids. And then I've just got a kind of a rubbery gasket surface to go up against that. And it should hold. I mean, it didn't leak last time. And uh, I mean, ordinarily, I'd probably just throw this out and get a new one, but I'm having trouble finding a cover that's got the fourth hole to accommodate the shaft coming out of the transmission so I can shift on the left side. I mean, I'm sure if I really dig, I could find one, but I, I haven't easily found one. And I do know this will work, so I'm going to go ahead and just go with this, and uh, it should be fine. I'm also missing, you've got two pins. you got that one, and then I'm missing that one. And that just helps align it right there and there, because it's actually only held on by this one central uh, bolt right here. That's the only thing that actually holds this thing on. So, uh, but this one pin should align it fine. And I'm actually going to run upstairs and see if I could find another one. I might have one for that. But if I don't, it should still line up fine. I'm not worried about that. Okay, so I just put a very light coat of the gasket sealer on here and uh, just basically to fill in those, you know, th those rough voids and just give it a, a gaskety surface, so to speak, to go up against that rubber seal. All right, the cover's back on, and uh, it's tight, it's snug, but I'm going to torque it down just a little bit more. I just want the, uh, that gasket seal to set just a little longer before I do, but uh, it's on there, and uh, it looks great. And, you know, none of this is really hard. I mean, the main obstacle on this one was just that engine sprocket that goes on the crankshaft, just being a little confused on why my OEM one didn't go on, and the fact that they retooled in 2004, so it was a little bit of a different size. But uh, once I figured it out, then, then all is well. And uh, so this side is done. Everything is in very good order. Uh, let's go around the other side real quick. And there's the plug where the starter went. So this is now a kickstart-only bike, uh, and it looks great. I mean, I'm real happy with how this turned out. And again, here's the right side, the timing side with the timing cover. That's all wrapped up. So what's next is now to start building up. So we're going to put the barrel on, the aluminum head, carburetor, and exhaust, and then the uh, engine will be completely reassembled. So this wraps up my version of eight and three quarters. Oh, it's close. I know I've said this like 20 times now, but I just don't see any obstacles moving forward. The barrel should go on without issue. Now, I'm even using the original studs. I do have new ones, but I'm not even going there at this point. The old ones are going to be fine. I'm just cleaning and rejetting the original carb, so that shouldn't be an issue. And the air filter is as simple as it gets. I also know exactly what exhaust I got, so that shouldn't be a problem either. Unless the new cables are too short or have the wrong ends or something, I think we're in the clear. Right. Anyway, thanks again for watching and following the series. And if you're new, definitely subscribe because this will change your life. And hit the like button and you'll probably win the lottery. And hit that bell icon. And I feel like I'm begging every time I say all this. I'm not going to beg. Seriously, if you don't want to ring the bell, don't ring the bell. Although I think you should. And like and subscribe. I'm seeing light at the end of the tunnel, guys. So until next time... Check it out. I just got the new iPhone Pro. Look at it. It's like radical new tech. I don't even know where the screen is. Look at this thing. I don't know. I got to figure out how to use it.